This is an All Sports Station production. Here's the punter, Bradley Pinion, on to get us started. And in front of a raucous crowd, this one is underway. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no Let's run back in. here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. So here are the Broncos now for their opening drive. They will be led out by a second-round pick in 2019. Out of Missouri, it's Drew Locke. Now the first carry here for Philip Lindsay. And oh, right away, he lost the football. It'll go as a loss of a yard on the game's first play. Second down. A call it luck or skill, whatever the case is, they're feeling good about just keeping the football there. Yeah, the biggest thing that they're calling it now, our ball. <laughs> I mean, they don't care if it was luck or skill. Boy, the panic that jumps up in your chest when that ball's on the ground. Whether you get it or your teammate gets it, just as long as you maintain possession, that's all you're looking for. A loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. Lock to throw on second down. And that will be incomplete. Try to dial up the long one way out there, but it'll be third down. And the Buffet Boys, the O-line, hopefully they're ready today. Listen, you got to feed them first. But if you do, you usually get a great product out on the field. And when they play well, the quarterback can't wait to feed them afterwards. Come on, little set. trouble thus far on their opening drive as they come up on a third and 11. Hey, four down, four down. Lock off of play action. Open man, that's Noah Fant, the tight end. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. That one good for 13 and a Denver first down. Well, that tight end position, it just seems to continue to evolve every year in the NFL. Yeah, you're getting really terrific athletes. A lot of them maybe were wide receivers at one point. They continue to give you speed, great hands, and big bodies, which make them excellent targets for quarterbacks. Here we go, here we go. So here's a first 94. and 10 at the 38. Hey, I'm coming, I'm coming. Deep deep. Lock now on first down. They'll find Lindsay here. Nothing on that one. It'll be second down. And a quick look at the Buccaneer defensive starters. It's easy to go back to the time Adamican Sue entered the NFL, and he was an absolute force right from the beginning. But it's been fun to watch his career progress, and I'm starting to see a little more finesse in his game, although I'm not sure he'd like me to describe it that way. But you see the agility, you see the movement, and of course, he can bull rush when he needs to to get to the quarterback. Had the completed pass, but for no gain, stopped right at the line, so it's second and ten. Now a first carry for Melvin Gordon. And hard running's going to get him over the 40 to the 42. It's a four-yard pick up there, and it leaves him with third and five. Well, I think that's what they're going to need to do here in the first half. You've got to take some pressure off of this young quarterback, and no better way to do it than to establish the running game early. 60 Pittsburgh. From the gun on third down, Locke. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Vita Vea with a big-time sack on third down. It's a loss of seven. It always helps for a visiting team to come in and set the tone on defense. In fact, when we talked with them prior to the game, they said they wanted this home crowd to feel like they had to hide their valuables when they were in town. <laughs> well, the home crowd quiet now early. See if their offense can take over and get some points on the board. On fourth down, here's Sam Martin on to kick it away. 
Back deep, Jadon Mickens. And that hits at the six and carries into the end zone for a touchback. So here are the Bucks now to take over for the first time. And they're led out by a guy who's done just about everything you could ever imagine to do in this league, the great Tom Brady. It's been a lot of fun watching him develop in his career, but that will to win, he's had that probably since birth, and it transmits itself throughout his entire ball club. Watching him play, it can be an absolute joy unless you're on the other team. What a nice looking play to start the drive down the middle and complete. A big pick up there, 18 yards and a Buccaneer first. From all the way up at the 38 now after a good start to the drive. Set the tone, defense. Let's go. Alert. Working from the gun, it's Brady. And he finds Howard complete. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. The completion good for three, and it's second down. And this offense can air it out, and when they do, you have to key on Mike Evans. And we do think about his catch radius first and foremost. A tall, lean receiver, but he actually can make some agile plays as well. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. And this is caught by Evans. And he'll lose yardage here, back at the 41. Officially, it will go as a one-yard loss, and that's going to lead to a third down. One thing we do know, he's going to get his catches. So as they move forward defensively, got to continue to focus on not giving up the big play when he does catch the ball in the secondary. Throwing is Brady on third down. That's complete to his receiver, Gadwin. And they'll work this down to the 40-yard line, tackled there. And this is going to be another first down as they'll make the tackle at the Broncos' 40. I don't think it's a surprise they're throwing the football early. We expected that. They told us they were going to come out firing, but four for four on the opening drive. They like that. <laughs> they don't just like it. They love it because now everyone gets locked in. Your confidence jumps up. Everyone's easy about what they're doing out there. And by the way, they're looking at the sidelines thinking to themselves and expressing, let's keep throwing it. We're doing pretty well. So a first and 10 now in Denver territory, right at the 40. And they're not going to get this one off Let's in go, time. Go. It'll be a delay. Wait, the delay of game wait. backs him up five, first and 15. They fake the handoff. Now Brady. Under pressure, and he will go down. Sacked back at the 46. Credit the sack to Von Miller. Well, we knew this guy wasn't especially fleet of foot, but he tried to conjure up some escapability, but there was no way he was getting away on that one. Now this one from about two counties over after the sack. They come up on a second and very long. Now Brady. And he's going to go down again. Von Miller picks up his second sack of the afternoon. 
Okay, let's go back a little bit and see if my schooling comes to the front. What's that old saying? Those who forget the lessons of history are doomed to repeat them? That's the same guy who's gotten back-to-back -back sacks. I think a double team may be in order. Need something from deep in the bag of tricks here after first and second down went backwards. It's third and very long. Shotgun now for Brady. Under pressure again, and down he goes again. Jarrell Casey, the offensive line is in tatters as that's now three sacks and three plays. And that is the third sack this offensive line has allowed this first quarter. Yeah, that puts him on pace. Let me do the rudimentary math here. To be sacked 12 times in a game, I know he's not going to go for that. I wonder if it's going to reshape what they decide to do on offense in terms of play calling. Well, I can tell you what, when he popped up, shaking his head, frustrated right now behind center. So on now is the Clemson man, Bradley Pinion, to punt this one away. <laughs> And this is away, it's a high kick, and he got all of it. And he didn't quite have the bank spin on that one. It hits at the four and continues into the end zone. It's a touchback. Here's the Denver offense now as they get set to take over here. Lock and the Broncos going to come up first and 10 at the 20. They fake the handoff. Now Lock. And his throw is going to be incomplete. You and I watched film yesterday, and you told me to watch his feet. Well, for whatever reason, his footwork just looked off on that throw. And you always love it when an ex-defensive back talks quarterback mechanics, right? Well, but you're good at it. Well, I, I try, all right? I don't know how good I am, but it doesn't take much to tell. His mechanics are off a little bit, exactly what you described. Footwork, that led to the incompletion. To throw again on second down, lock. And on the left sideline, he caught it, but out of bounds, according to the headlinesman. Incomplete, so the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. A lot of contact there, but there was no way it appeared that he was going to get a flag on that one. Looking for it, but he wasn't going to get it. And as an ex-defensive back, you love it when they let you play and jostle downfield. The threat of a second straight punt to start the game is looming as they come up third and ten. Here's Locke. This is the tight end fan. And he'll get this one way up just shy of the 45-yard line. That one good for 24 yards. Partner, it's a lot of fun watching the NFL now, isn't it? Because when the big fellow runs routes, it used to be when we were kids, he'd run about three different routes, and that was it. Now he can run anything and catch the balls we just saw there. They'll run on first down. It's Gordon. There to stop him was Carlton Davis. Now that's the type of play that'll fire up a defense, hold them to one yard on a first down run. It'll be interesting to see if the offense decides to press the run at all or if they'll abandon it now after gaining only one on that play. Here we go, set, 60 or. Right here, right here. Get it. On second and nine, Locke, he's got his big tight end, Fant. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. Well, that was an okay hook up there with his tight end, but unfortunately, they didn't get the kind of yards they had hoped for. That's going to bring up third down. Let's go. And let's Sticky see the Bucks more. with six DB, so a dime set here on third down. Ready, ready. Block working out of the gun. And the throw there going to be incomplete. You can tell they were hoping for a flag there offensively. Several on the sideline motioning. Hey, why not a penalty? Why not a penalty? I, w what did you see? Yeah, I think you've got to let them play. And the officials are instructed if there's contact coming from both sides, no flag. Let them fight it out. And forces fourth down. Here's Sam Martin now. 
as he's on to punt for Denver. And the kick's away as he angles this one for the sideline. And this will depend on the spot as it sails out of bounds. And they'll say it sailed out at the 10-yard line. The spotlight now focuses on the quarterback, and that's Tom Brady. And maybe he's starting to wave the white flag a little bit. He's playing pretty well, but the pressure, it's got to him. Has to find a way to step around it, step through it, or just handle it. Because as you mentioned, he's having a pretty good day overall. Just the hits keep coming and taking those sacks. That's not the way that they want to finish a ball game with their quarterback on the ground so much. Now he liked to stay upright. When he's been upright, he's been pretty good. That throw by Brady incomplete. And here's a look at the defense for Denver. Von Miller is so good that he doesn't even need a nickname. His ability to bend and dip on the pass rush, unequaled in this league. Brady's incompletion on first down leads to a second and ten. Now it's the former Badger, Dare Ogunbowale. And a nice gain there as he'll be taken down just shy of the 20. A nice job to get eight there after the incompletion, and now they'll look at a third and two coming up. Okay, he didn't break that one all the way, but you got to know that he feels like he's right on the verge, and that's probably exactly what he's telling them in the huddle right now. Here's Hogan Bawale, and he will have a first down at about the 21-yard line. They only get two there, but on third and one, that's all they needed to keep the drive going. Third and two, right? So this is a situation where low man has got to win at the line of scrimmage, but it's not just the low man winning. It's the low man who's winning with some force, and they had that to pick up the first down. Barely picking it up, but they did. Wait, why, Danny? They'll run it now out of the gun. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. Now that sends him two yards in the wrong direction and leads to second down. I know the speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. From the gun, it's Brady. And that is incomplete. They had enough yards for the first down, but a clutch hit right there defensively. Jars it free. No first down. Here's Bradley Pinion now, as he's on to punt for Tampa Bay. He'll send this one into the mile high air, and it's a good one. Fielded at the 20. A good return there, call it 13 yards. And that will come the offense as they take over. And Denver getting set to take the field. We've seen both of these offenses still sort of in that figuring things out phase, but I suspect some action on the scoreboard soon as they start out here first and 10. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Let's go, defense. Our time. It's our time. They'll start the drive with a run by Gordon. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. 
Not a big run on the first play of the drive, but that doesn't necessarily mean it was a bad play. Sometimes you're just trying to settle in, get your guys a little bit of contact, and get things moving. Down. 15, one. 15, one. Watch, watch the play. Watch the play. Shoot. On second down now, it's Gordon. And he'll get this only up to about the 35. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. Back-to-back -back runs, I'd say that encompassed maximum effort for minimal gain. Minimal yardage, and now they're going to need something more than minimal on this play coming up. 30 base. And let's get that ball, D. Let's get that ball. Lee Frim, Lee Frim. Throwing his lock on third down. This one complete to the running back, Lindsey. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. A really good pickup of 28 yards. And at his size, he's a smaller back. You can get him the football. He can kind of get lost, make someone miss. It's good for him. Yeah, it's great for him. I like what you said there. Sometimes he gets lost in the traffic a little bit. But get him out in the open field into some space. That plays to his strengths the best and keeps him out of it where all the big boys are, you know, make him make someone miss in the open field. Here we go, here we go. So from Buccaneer territory now, it's first and 10 at the 37-yard line. Now Gordon. And this play will be blown up. He'll lose yardage back at the 38. That's going to go as a loss of one on first down. No score after one on EA Sports. Ready, ready. 90 Wolf. Strong right, strong right, strong right. Hey, 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 hey. It. On second down, a run with Lindsey. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. Denver has a first down on the 15-yard play. For a lot of guys playing this game, there's no better feeling than running right through a tackle. He's able to lower center of gravity and churn his legs for a really nice pickup. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. On first and 10, here's Locke. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. He was trying to find Noah Fant, the tight end. And that'll bring up second down. Once again, they'll go from the 23-yard line on second and 10. Now Locke on the bootleg. His throw caught right around the six. And he's brought down after a very nice game. A good pick up there, a 22. afternoon well they weren't messing around first and goal they don't do anything fancy they just go to the fullback right away I like how you phrase that because oftentimes they come back to the fullback when it's late in the down and distance count right in this case first down let's go get it right now and he got it six points on the board on here Brandon McManus for the point after He's 
got it. Seven nothing Broncos. So that drive in total eight plays. And it culminates in a touchdown by the Broncos. After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. This will be fielded on the back line of the end zone. And no run here back go, here. here this go. will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The spotlight now focuses on the quarterback, and that's Tom Brady. And I guess the question, Charles, is what's the formula for keeping him better protected? Because as we see, the protection, it struggled. And normally what you get is renewed determination. When the, when the big guy gets hit, that usually sparks people. Hey, we can't let this happen anymore. They take it personally. He's not supposed to be on the ground. But that hasn't been the case so far in this game. So maybe they've got to figure out how do they get rid of the ball faster to help out the offensive line so he doesn't get hit as much. And we'll see if they can keep him off the ground now going forward. Playing against a 3-4 front is really challenging for offensive linemen because they can do so many different things. But when you're running the football, if you can handle the nose tackle up front and then maybe a guard can slide up to the second level and block a linebacker, that's when you have success running the football. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Now that's the way to do it. Hand it to someone with vision and good footwork and add in a little bit of power and you find a way to pick up first downs. So from the 36 now, first and 10. On the counter, here's Jones. And he'll be brought down somewhat awkwardly here and a late flag as well. I think this one's going to be a face mask. Officials so cognizant of that call nowadays, but that one looked pretty easy. Yeah, you're right. They took out of their hands having to wonder whether it's a 5-yard or a 15-yard inadvertent or not. Now it's a lot easier. You see it, you call it. And now it's first and 10. A big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. Here's Brady to throw. And he's going to find his man out of the backfield. That's complete. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. That's good for a Buccaneer first, a pickup of 12 yards. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. And that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. From the 31, Brady. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. And he's the epitome of what we call the move tight end, a guy that you can line up anywhere, in the slot, out wide, in tight, doesn't really matter because he has such great skills, you want to utilize him in all aspects of your passing offense. And there he was in the slot for the catch. Ready to throw on third and one. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. It's picked up by the Broncos. And he'll bring it all the way back, just a yard or two shy of midfield. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. We got it. We got it. Often on fumbles, you look at the guy who coughed it up and say, geez, what did he do? But hey, let's tip the cap to the defense here. Not a problem at all, my man. I'm not even going to tip it. I'm going to doff my cap to him. Congratulations. Big time play. Knocking it free and creating something good for your team.
Here's the Denver offense now as they get set to take over here. Things progressing to plan so far. Their defense has been solid, and they've got themselves a 7-0 lead after the touchdown the last time they had the ball. And this is no time to even think about, hey, are we going to milk the clock? Hey, are we just going to do ball control? This is the NFL. 7-0 leads, they don't last very long unless you continue to push the envelope on offense. A little bit of daylight on that first down run sets them up nicely. Eight yards on the carry. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave them with a second and two. Eight yards the tally on that first down run. Here's second and two. On second down, here's Locke. Screen pass to Lindsey. He's got a first down and more inside the 30. A gain of 37. I know we love our jobs. And pretty much any play we see, we're pretty, you know, excited about. But big plays, let's face it, that's what we absolutely live for. How about that one? That was great. And what our camera missed was the fist pump from the sideline after that catch. They're fired out. That's a big game. Now a chance to make that big play really hurt. It's first and goal just outside the five. First and goal, Melvin Gordon. And he'll be stopped just outside the five at the six. It's a gain of a yard, and it'll set up second and goal. You mentioned very early on the need to establish a running game for this young QB. They really haven't been able to do that, though, in the first half. So that means what in halftime? Adjustments, adjustments time, right? Figure out what they are. Figure out the things that they really want to accomplish and who to run behind. Which are your better blockers? And he'll take it into the end zone for a Denver score. Andrew Beck with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Broncos push further out in front and make it now a pair of touchdowns for the big man out of the backfield. I'm not sure this was in the game plan, but boy, it's working to perfection. And I know one first has a big grin on his face now. And that's that big guy's found his way into the end zone twice in this game. Now McManus for the extra point. Oh, they get to the football. It's blocked. That's a live ball scooped up by the offense. So with the missed PAT in his rearview mirror, he goes back out to kick this one off. And the mile high air in full effect as that's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. And last time the turnover on the fumble, and they were in enemy territory, so that had to be very frustrating. Down on the scoreboard here, can't do it again. You nailed every part of what was frustrating. <laughs> down on the scoreboard, had a drive going, and pushed it past the 50-yard line, so they thought they were in striking distance. And to come away with nothing, not a good feeling at all, to put it mildly. Now they can't afford to do that again. Yeah, now can they get that bad taste out of their mouth here? Ball on the 30, they'll come up with a second and five. Right here, right here, guys. Mike 51, Mike 51. Snap comes at one, and it's Brady. And his throw here is incomplete. The intended target was Chris Godwin, and it's third and five. Wait, 
The Bucks on third down. Two for five to this point. This will be third and five. Operating from the gun. Brady. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk of the 45. It's a gain of 16. First down, Tampa Bay. got him complete and the result here a pickup of eight leaves him with two to go on second down nothing fancy on first down but a very consistent type of a play hit that slant a lot of people call it an extension of the running game and it can be if that pass is completed because you hit a guy on the run like that he often can go for big yardage sets him up nicely for second down staying ahead of schedule Brady's throw there complete. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside on, the 30. That one, a gain of 20 and a first down. When Mike Evans sees man coverage, I don't think he's the only guy who gets excited. I'll guarantee the guy throwing the ball does because guess what? He's got a lot of options about where to place it because of Mike Evans' size and frame. Brady, 11 to 15 through the air. Here's first and 10. Jones. And only a yard this time as he's taken down right around the 26. The best defensive linemen, they play with great leverage so they can get low and not get bowled over by offensive linemen. They have excellent hands. They can throw people off on a play. We just saw a great example of a really good run stop by a guy playing the defensive tackle position. <laughs> on the delay, Jones. And he still has yet to get on track in this first half as they're gonna stop him behind the line. Partner, you mind if I take off this headset and put on a coaching headset? You wanna get this running game going? I wanna get this running game going. I'm going down there and saying, gentlemen, we have got to run the football. We've got to get it going right now. Yeah, to this point in the second quarter, it has been a struggle. The Bucks on third down. They've hit it 50%, three of six to this point. This is third and 11. From the gun, Brady. And now a fumble. Brady loses the football. So they escape, so to speak, maintaining the football. Defensively, though, opportunity miss. It definitely was because that's all defenses talk about, getting the football and either advancing it the other way or just getting possession and turning it over to their offense. That can be a little bit deflating. You're exactly right, a lost opportunity. Here's Bradley Pinion now as he's on to punt for Tampa Bay. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Let's go, baby. Let's go. And Denver getting set to take the field. Got it. Lock and the Broncos going to come up first and 10 at their own 26. Throwing on first down is Lock. Left side here, that's the tight end fan. And they work this well up field across the 45. 22 yards on the catch and run, a first down. I know the halftime's approaching, but I don't think he's going to want to take a break. That's his fifth catch. Yeah, they've really been targeting the tight end. So one play, and they're already just shy of midfield. I'm coming after you. Kill, kill, kill. Here's Gordon. 
And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. If this defense wants to stay in this ball game, they've got to start ending some drives. That helps. And they have to look ahead at what they expect the offense to do. And right now with that lead, that's run the football. So you don't just stack the line of scrimmage. You have to get upfield and try and make some plays in their backfield. Now he's going to swing this one out to his running back. Just a one-yard pickup on the play. And they're going to have a third down. This defense tightening up a bit. That last catch, just one yard, making it third and nine. Here's Locke to throw. And that will be incomplete. We do see this a lot from rookie quarterbacks, don't we? They kind of lock in on their intended target. A lot of times they establish that buddy, that guy they depend on. And boy, defense is zero in on it, don't they? A little bit too telegraphed that time, and that's why it's knocked away. Here's Sam Martin now, as he's on to punt for Denver. And he gets this away, and look at this. This is a good one. Mike Evans and the rest of the offensive unit heading back out there now. You would have to think they're going to make it more of a priority to get him the football. You're losing here in the second quarter, and he's been really quiet. I think all we have to do, and it's too bad we can't actually see the actual play sheet now from the coordinator, because he's looking down at that and saying, okay, do I put him in different spots? Do I try and isolate him? What routes do I run? You're exactly right. They've got to get the ball in his hands and get their offense kick-started. He does have the two catches, but pretty quiet so far. Easy. Brady's saying let's go as he'll hustle him to the line. Throwing again on second down. Brady, wide open receiver complete. Now the Bucks going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a tick under a minute to go before half. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. They run it. It's Ogun Bawale. And they'll get this just to the 47. One-yard gain. The Bucs going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 55 seconds to go until halftime. Second and nine. Brady, pressure, and he's going to be taken down. They sack him back right around the 44. Von Miller getting him once again his third sack of the afternoon. They'll get to the line here, but remember, it's also third down. Working from the gun, it's Brady. He's going to wind up and air it out. And it falls incomplete after almost being intercepted. A pick there would have been great. The good news for the defense now, it's fourth down. You've always been very good about checking my math. Am I correct? That's the first time that it's been incomplete when they've thrown it to him? Yes, he had caught every other ball coming his way. So they feel like they've got something really good going there, and they're going to continue to go there until the defense makes an adjustment and takes it away. Well, they finally made an adjustment there. We'll see if they can build on that stop. Here's Bradley Pinion now, as he's on to punt for Tampa Bay. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. 
And this one hits at the one, continues on into the end zone for a touchback. Here's the Denver offense now as they get set to take over here. You've got less than 30 seconds left here in the half. You're well on your own side of the field. What are we doing here, Coach Davis? Well, I'm trying something on first down. And it's something that's safe. It's something that's been done many times before. A lot of people say it's not even worth trying, but I'm running a draw. I'm running a screen. I'm seeing if something pops. And if it does, that can alter my strategy and potentially get me some points. And if it doesn't work, well, then you just run the clock out and go to the locker room. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. Not wanting to take a chance this time, they'll keep it on the ground. And he's going to be unable to get upfield as they take him down at the 21-yard line. So that flag will cost him 15. And it doesn't matter anymore how you get the face mask. Any part of it, that's going to be 15 yards. Go, now it's first and 10, a big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. Lock now on first down. He'll let this go deep for Sutton. And that is incomplete, seven seconds remaining. They'll try again from the 36 on second and 10. They'll try the draw, Lindsay. And we're going to get a timeout with two seconds remaining in the second quarter. time it's Gordon and he will have the first down as he gets this to the 47 so we've reached the intermission in what right now is a 13 point game as we send you on out to our studios in Orlando here's Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports Halftime Report okay Brandon thanks very much and welcome everyone to this abridged version of the EA Sports Halftime Report this one has been a hard-hitting affair to this point and you got to expect we'll see more of the same in the second half. And to bring the action your way, let's get it right back out to Brandon God. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This one taken from the seven. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. Out come the Buccaneers. They'll have it first to start in the third quarter. They come out here with a zero on the scoreboard. What was said in that locker room? That's what I want to know. I would love to have been in there because we often have the feeling that there's a lot of shouting, screaming, people upset. But typically, halftime locker rooms are a lot more clinical than that. And in this case, are they upset that the plays weren't working because of execution? Or did they think just they were just bad plays to call? Yeah. We'll find out pretty quickly here if they feel like they had something going, but they just need to do it a little bit better or not. We'll find out. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver, that makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tougher, guys trying to get to the football. Come on, fellas. 
That one, a first down pickup of eight. Wait, that, wait, 20. Stop your whining. A run with Ogan Bawale. The big man, Jarrell Casey, in on the stop. And this is why aggressive defensive coordinators love to blitz. It wreaks havoc because they end up taking their attention to the blitzers, freed up the D linemen to make the play. Wait, set. Wait, 20 hot. Wait, 20. Now Brady on the bootleg. He finds his target, it's Evans. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. That's good for a Buccaneer first to pick up of 12 yards. If you're gonna blitz, likely gonna leave you in man coverage with this guy, and that is less than ideal. It is because just about any offense that has an elite receiver, if you blitz and have him in man coverage, you're going to him even if he has an elite defender on him because he usually knows where the ball is before the defender does. And they're going to get him behind the line yet again as his nightmare afternoon continues. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. 53! I'm trying to come hit! Back to the ground, this time with Jones. And the lane closes up quickly as he'll get about three down to the 38. You got it. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. They fake the handoff, now Brady. And the throw there going to be incomplete. Certainly looked like they were getting ready to convert there on third down, but what an effort to get his hand on that one, knock it away, and brings up a fourth down decision. Here's Gay for the Buccaneer field goal. This officially a 55-yard attempt. And this won't get there, won't be on line either. It's no good, off to the right, and this score will stay right where it is. Down here in the third quarter, obviously that's one they could have used. Yeah, one of my favorite special teams coaches in the NFL told me, what separates the kickers in the NFL versus the ones who are not, is not the misses, it's the second miss in a row. Best kickers in the league, they don't miss two in a row. He's got to get his head back together in case he gets another shot. So now a look at the Broncos as they head back out there for their first possession of the second half. They were able to get the ball back here, didn't surrender any points. Now they'll look to add to that lead. How about the boost the defense gave them? Going right out on the field, shutting them down, not giving up any points, and turning the ball back over. They want to do their part now and show them a little respect and some gratitude <laughs> by scoring some points. And to get a little more cushion. Let's go now. 70, Indy. Hey, hey, tight end's right. Watch tight end. Uh, uh, uh. From just shy of midfield, lock. Throws right side, and that's complete. too much extracurricular Let's there. When you have a game with a lot of contact, tensions are going to run pretty high. You're going to be emotional, but you have to harness it somehow, and he didn't on that play. Set, ready? 60 Pittsburgh. Six man. Check curls, check curls, check shoot. Following the penalty, here's Gordon. And he's going to get about four down inside the 10 to the 9 third quarter and you've got the lead you're not ready to go into that four minute offense to close the game out but a running game can really benefit your team right now ready, ready, 50 plant go. Cut left. Ready, go. 
He's gripped. He's gripped. To throw on second and six. Lock. That's complete. Right around the eight. And here he'll get it down to the seven. That catch good for only a yard, and it'll be third down. This is Melvin Gordon, and he is into the end zone for a Denver touchdown. Taking it in from seven yards away, and the Broncos push further out in front. Still plenty of time left in the game, but now starting to pull away a little bit, get some breathing room with that one. And I don't want people to think that NFL locker rooms are cookie cutter, that everyone's saying the exact same thing in every situation, but I do know that all 32 teams have an emphasis on starting fast. Game, being on the second half, no matter what, with his first five minutes, first three, whatever, this was a big score to start the second half. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. Should have been picked. Probably doesn't matter on a two-point conversion, but still... As a former DB, you want to grab that ball when you can, don't you? You certainly do, and, and don't say it, because I know you're thinking it. Don't say it. <laughs> what am I thinking? You know what I'm, I know what you're thinking. Well, if he'd had hands, he'd be playing on offense, right? Yeah, that's true. You've said that before. After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. This will be fielded at the six. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple on, extra yards, up go. to the 27-yard line. Now the Buccaneer offense gets set to take over. Now they had compiled a pretty long drive last time. Unfortunately, though, it ended with no points after the missed field goal. And that can hurt the psyche of a team because as they drove downfield, you know you're never supposed to count points in your mind until they go up on the board. But let's face it, we've been there. We've seen teams before. They were counting on those points. They didn't get them. Can they come back now, start over again, and grind it out? Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Jarrell Casey able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. That's his second sack of the game in the best defensive ends. They do their homework as much as offensive guys do. They know how to beat the offensive lineman across from them, what moves they need to do to set them up. This guy's been pretty good at it all game long. Work to be done here on second and 16 after the sack. Now Brady. Looking middle, and that's complete. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. And there's another completion to the tight end. And let's face it, it is hard to overthrow. A six foot six inch target. <laughs> it is indeed. Quarterbacks like their speed guys. They like that huge six six target that they've got in him. They really do. And it reminds me of what one great tight end told me once. He told his quarterback, just make sure you throw it up there. You know, kind of like put it up in the top shelf where the kids can't get it. And they'll get him down about three yards short of the first. Here's Bradley Pinion now. He's been one of their few bright spots so far. 
He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. Good work, boys. Let's go. Let's go. Now this Broncos offensive unit ready to head back out onto the field. Lock and the Broncos going to come up first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Here we go. <laughs> They'll try and get the ground game going. Here's Gordon. And he is brought down at the 22 after a gain of two, and it brings up second down. From the 22, here's second and eight. Check nine, check nine. A run with Lindsey out of the gun. And he's up in it after a gain of four up to the 25-yard line. Let's go. Eight, read. Check Mike 54. Mike 54. Check up. Now. Now lock. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 17 yards for the Broncos there as they've got themselves a first down. They ran that one well. And not only did they pick up a nice chunk of yardage on the screen, they sent a message to the defense. Rush the passer all you want, but you better be careful. We can hit you going back the other direction. Now on first down. He's got it. The tight end, Jeff Hireman. And taking it across midfield and inside this. the 45. Give him 14 yards there and a Denver first down. So from Buccaneer territory now, it's first and 10 at the 44-yard line. On first down, lock. And that's complete to the tight end, Hireman. And he is out of bounds inside the 35. So not quite a first down just yet as they come up on second and less than a yard. Again, they'll throw with Locke. And it's incomplete. Didn't have a receiver open downfield, and as it turned out, couldn't even find his outlet, man, because of the coverage. It was way too tight. Unable to find anyone open. An incomplete pass on second down leads us to third and inches. And he gets it to the 32, good enough for a first down. Two yards and able to get the first down in the process. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Lock going to throw. This is the tight end fan. And he's able to get it down to the 25-yard line. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. 
They're right. He's good. He's good. To throw it is locked. Throwing it a traffic there, and that's complete. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Good throw, good catch, but I really like the route. The drag and being able to run away from defenders, hard to stick with them for that long. Yeah, better against man than zone, or? Better against man, because now you're running away from someone, and you're not running into a defensive player in another zone. Now flags, and we're going to get a delay of game. So a little bit of a stiffer challenge now. First and 15 following the delay of game. Back to the ground now with Gordon. Levante David in on the tackle. They're in a pretty good spot right now with a convincing lead. I think this is where they put on the boxing gloves, start to try and pound them into submission. And the offensive line, they've controlled this game. I don't see why that trend would change now. Okay, ready? Tonight. Mark 54. I got it. I got it. Check 24. Check 24. Hit it. On second down. It's Lindsay. Run, run, and this one run. also slow and developing as he's maybe getting back here to the line of scrimmage, but not much more than that. So they'll get a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we've played three quarters. But we'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. The Broncos on third down. They've been really good converting seven of their ten tries. This is third and 11. They fake the handoff. Now Locke. Staying on his feet. Now Locke. He lost the football. It's out. So it goes as a fumble, but the key thing, not a fumble loss. Yeah, that, that stat's big, isn't it? I mean, it, I remember watching teams play. The ball might be on the ground a number of times during the game, but the other team doesn't get it. That's a huge difference in the ball game. And in this case, they were able to retain possession. Now Brandon McManus for the Bronco field goal. From the right hash, this from 45 yards away. And this is right down the middle as he puts it through. And that one ups the lead to 22 to nothing. So they get three, certainly hoping for six after a 13-play drive. So you console yourself on defense by saying you did your job, right? If they go 13 plays, you only give up a field goal. You did a nice job there. But here's the other part. 13 plays, you don't force any mistakes, you don't take the ball away, maybe that's the way they should look at it. After splitting the uprights, McManus to kick it away. Now the Buccaneers offensive unit back out on the field. And let's face it, this drive is not going to have any bearing on this game, but it's kind of important for one reason, isn't it? It certainly is. you got to get points. And okay, all right, I'm being facetious here. But you get points, you feel a little bit better about yourself as you move on to the next one. A throw left side to start the drive is complete. That's good for a Buccaneer first to pick up of 12 yards. Decent start to the drive, but let's face it, they need a lot of things to go right in a short amount of time down three scores. Yeah, they're going to run their two-minute offense here in this game, but this is for future games. Can they get better and be ready for the next time, hopefully with a chance to win? Brady now, perfect since the second half started. Seven of seven. It's first and ten. Now a toss left side into the hands of his tight end, and this winds up a gain of four to the 41. That throw good for four. It's second down. 
Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful, but not any run after it. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. Now Brady. And this is caught by Evans. And this is going to be another first down as he'll make the tackle at the Broncos' 45-yard line. You cannot write these guys off just yet, not with a quarterback like that under center. You mean it actually crossed your mind with him running the team that you could actually maybe write this game off? Not yet. Not a chance. Not with him. We've seen it too many times. Show a first and 10 now in Denver territory at the 45-yard line. Now a nice throw here right side. He hauls it in, and he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. 14 yards there and a Buccaneer first down. Sometimes the most effective routes are the ones that you run in the backyard. You probably ran them when you were five years old. How about a little Wait, curl that, there against hey, zone? But the key to it is finding the open spots in the zone. How a linebacker or a defensive back will widen to give you space. Find that area and let your quarterback hit you. And they'll be inside the 25 now at the 24. Seven yards there on the first down screen play. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Now Brady again. He'll find Miller. That's complete. The Bucks passing go, game looking good go. on this drive. It's a first down. They come out five wide, three of them to the right side. Again, they'll throw with Brady. The quick slant caught, and he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Buccaneers. A five-yard touchdown, and the Bucs are able to cut in now to that deficit. So what can Brady do here is he'll lead his guys up to go for two. Let's make these babies cry all the way back home. Let me go. Brady to throw again. And the Broncos get there and take him down. So tried to throw it in for two points, but the D got home, brought him down. Yeah, got home, which means there had to be good coverage, just had nowhere to go with the ball. Typically, you try and throw quick hitters, quick slants, you know, maybe even a quick fade. Nothing was open. He ends up getting sacked. Following the touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. This is fielded at the chalk of the 10. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. The Bronco offense now set to come back out onto the field. Well, there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away. Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. They look to throw. It's locked. He completes this to Sutton.
Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. Another tote for Gordon. He's been busy this afternoon. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Well, it is our business to analyze what we saw out there. And on that play, I saw a defense staying in base, not taking a chance, not blitzing in a situation when they absolutely need the football back. That's either a case of overthinking it or not thinking it through. If you do blitz, do you have to be careful about where you're coming from or are you just coming from all angles? You have to be careful about where you're coming from, obviously. But at this stage, you have to take a few chances as well. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. He was out there waving his arms, saying, throw it here, dropped it, not a good look. Well, all I can do is just look at him with contempt on that one. As a defensive back, I'm saying, not as an announcer. <laughs> just like, really? A little bit of a diva Thank look, isn't it? Yeah, very much so, because I think what happens is he just had too much time to think. He's wide open now. Here comes the ball, and he doesn't concentrate and drops it. He'll let this go deep for Sutton. It's caught inside the 25. It's a big play there for the Broncos. 43 yards. Boy, another big play late here for an offense, Charles. It certainly has had its fair share of big plays. Coverage has been a problem all game long, and I would say that going along with that has been confidence because even if they had the right coverage, they've still dented them, and now it's been a real issue for them during this game. So the big play means just like that, they'll operate from the red zone now on first down. Now they run from the gun with Gordon. So a nice job to break the one tackle, but not much daylight after that as he's brought down. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Starting to become a tough spot for this defense. You're down fourth quarter, looking a little fatigued maybe on that side of the ball. Partner, we've seen this before, haven't we? Because every coach we've ever talked to says body language is important. And now you're seeing guys with their hands on their hips, they're bent over, hands on their knees. And the offensive guys are just saying, let's just keep running it at them. We've got them now. They'll wind up losing three yards here. And that's going to lead to a third down. He has elite instincts from his linebacker spot. He's able to diagnose the run and flies in like a missile to stop that one behind the line of scrimmage. The Broncos on third down. Now they've converted seven times and could use another right now. This is third and eight. Throwing his lock on third down. And this is gonna be incomplete. I think that was a good job there defensively. They did allow him to drive all the way downfield, but once they got their backs to the goal line, they really turned up the pressure. Yeah, they let him get all the way down here. Now the field shrinks. They've struggled to convert, and that last incompletion brings up fourth. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. Oh, they get to the football. It's blocked. Please tell me this doesn't come off as snarky, but that's a relative chip shot. I mean, you've got to be able to execute that one. I don't care what they design on the other side about trying to block the kick. That should be three points on the board. Yeah, and we've talked about it before. If you're out at 55, 60 yards, low trajectory from here, you get that thing up, this should be three. Yeah, I, there's nothing routine in football, but this one really almost should be. Snap, hold, kick, ball through the post. Didn't happen that way. On first down, Brady. And nowhere to fit that football in. It's knocked away and incomplete. When you see passes knocked down by those guys I call the frustrated fullbacks, the linebackers, you know that in their zone coverage, they were able to drop, see the ball thrown, and react to it very quickly. Brady's incompletion on first down leads to a second and ten. Throwing again, Brady. Looking for his running back, and he's got him. No gain on that one, and it's going to bring up a third down. A well, defense loves to hang their hat on that, don't they? You get a guy that catches the ball, but you stop him for no gain. Without a doubt, because they're also used to trying to catch people after the catch, and they miss. And that turns into what? A huge play. We've seen it so many times. In this case, though, 
Catch was made, put down right on the spot. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Von Miller, who else? He's in there for his fourth sack of the afternoon. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. We've seen it demonstrated time and time again to the tune of seven sacks in this game thus far. A critical one here if they're going to have any shot at this thing. So they'll go for it on fourth down. Brady to throw for it on fourth down. Airing this one out for Evans. Well, this is taken in. It's complete. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. Mike Evans, 85 yards as his guys are able to pull a bit closer. Early on, you hit on it. Needing to avoid the big play. Easier said than done, though. There's a big touchdown. Yeah, the big thing is, when he does get his catches, you've got to tackle him and get him on the ground. Obviously, weren't able to do it on that one. Here we go now as we get set for a big two-point conversion. From the gun, it's Brady. And they're going to get the two. It's caught. So they get the conversion. And now we're back to a one-score game. And that almost makes it a brand-new ball game. Now it's a one-score affair after they get the two. And you have to know they were holding their breath on the two-point play because they had to have it to get it within the range that you just talked about. Dialed up their two-point play. It worked. Now they're feeling like they've got a shot at this one. Following the touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. This is fielded at the chalk of the 10. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. And Denver getting set to take the field. They have the lead, obviously, late in the game. I guess the good news for them is if for some reason they would make a mistake, a field goal on, does the set. opposition no good. Everyone loves to have a little bit of a cushion, and that helps you immeasurably. But the bottom line is, do all the things that you're taught in order to close out the game. Don't even let that become an issue. Yeah, but still a one-possession game. This one not fully over yet. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. You don't see that a ton, do you? Or the cornerback coming over to the middle of the field to make a run tackle. That's someone with a ton of confidence to feel like nothing is pressuring him on his side of the field. Sees that the ball's moved to the middle and just sprints over there to help out. He ends up getting the tackle. Well played. They'll tussle for it, and this is going to be caught. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the Bucks' 44-yard line. Defensively, they're okay with that. Short little route, tackle him inbounds. Okay. All right, cliche alert. It's time for someone to make a play because they've got to have something bigger downfield. They can't just take what they give them. They've got to force it and make something big happen for them. So from Buccaneer territory now, it's first and 10 at the 44-yard line. On first and ten, here's Locke. Got a man open, it's Sutton. And to the 36-yard line, taken down there after getting eight yards. A good pick up there, eight yards on the first down completion. Continuing to run, they'll probably wind this all the way before snapping it on second down. This is Gordon. And he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. He got maybe a half yard at most, but officially they'll be left with a third and two. 
Now, obviously, that's some good work there defensively, being able to stop them and bring it up a key third down. But if you're on the offensive side of the ball, there's an opportunity because I know what defensive guys are thinking right now. Just stop them, get to the ball. That means they might not be sound defensively. There could be some opportunities. And you said key third down. Highlight that word. Put it in bold. Here we go. And this play will be blown up. He'll lose yardage back at the 38. He lost two, and it brings up four. Well, they opted not to run it. They completed the pass on third and two, but they lost yardage to bring up four. Well, give credit to the guys on the other side of the ball. They snuffed out the play, but it does bring into question, one, the play call, because they didn't run the ball there. They could have run it, and two, just not getting it. That's got to be deflating for them. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This to make it a two-score game. And he has got it from 55 yards away. That was never in doubt. So his second field goal of the game, and that could turn out to be the big one. Yeah, you have to make them score twice to beat you, and that's not impossible. But here in the fourth quarter, puts their backs clearly against the wall. After splitting the uprights, McManus to kick it away. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. Tom Brady in the offense. Down by 11, a minute 50 to play. They need a touchdown with a two-point conversion and a field goal in either order as they've got it first down. Brady now on first down. Try to drop one in, but it's incomplete. Mike Evans, the one he was looking for. And that'll bring up second down. Brady's incompletion on first down leads to a second and ten. To throw again, Brady. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. Now the Bucks going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. from the gun it's Brady now a desperation throw deep downfield and he bats it away and it falls down incomplete looking to erase a two-score deficit here in the fourth quarter going for some big plays yeah they certainly were they just decided one shot didn't they forget trying to move the ball downfield in small little increments let's go for the big one but how about the defense playing situational football looking at the scoreboard and realizing what could hurt us most? The deep shot. They played it well. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. They'll go for it. It's Brady. He's going to let it fly. And this is intercepted, and that should do it. Picked off by Justin Simmons. Well, on fourth down, that turned out like a punt. Maybe he was better defensively there just to knock it down. And you know they go over those situations. All right, fourth down, where's the ball? Where would we get the ball? But instinct takes over, and when it's in the air, they just go and get it. So it's hard to get on him for intercepting it, but the smart play would have been what you suggested. Knock it down and take over in a deeper position. And coming out now, the Broncos. And a few kneel downs should come very close to finishing this one off, depending on whether or not we see any defensive timeouts. They still have two, but using them would just be prolonging what's really already been decided. So from the 36 now, first and 10. 
Snap. They run it here with Gordon. And the big boys up front, they're going to stop him right at the line. The Bucks going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. Another running situation on the doorstep as they come up second and ten. This is Gordon as they go to him again. And hard running's going to get him over the 40 to the 42. The Bucks forced to use their third and final timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Here's Locke. Screen pass to Lindsey. And he's got the first down yardage as he takes it down to the 49. And that gain of nine buys them a new set of downs. He's set to take a knee, and that should do it for this ball game. Listen, anytime you take a knee to end a game, that means you've won it. So it doesn't matter whether it's home or on the road, but there's something a little extra special about <laughs> doing it in front of your home crowd, isn't there? And the home crowd applauding. They're happy with what they've seen. Chalk this one up in the left-hand column for a win. Yeah, that's right. Head to the locker room, throw the wristbands in the crowd for the kids, your gloves, your towels. Get to share it with the home team. And Charles, I think when the schedule comes out, all teams, no matter where they're predicted to finish, talk about protecting your home turf. They were able to do that here in this one. Similar to a tennis match, right? Not letting them break your serve. That way you hold on to it. They got it done, and they feel very good about that victory. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. The Broncos are winners as we say so long from Denver.